Good afternoon. Welcome to Our Lady of Victory. As we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Easter, a special welcome to guests and visitors. Our mass settings today begin with the glory to God at number 876 in the music issue. This and all remaining service musics can be found on the board to your left. Please join in our opening hymn number 470, 470 the King of Love, my Shepherd is, 470. Please rise. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us take a moment to call to mind our sins, that the mercy of the Lord might be new for each one of us this afternoon. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask of Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by, my, by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, in his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone you rejected, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone rejected by the builders has become Thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. I will give thanks to you for you have answered me and have been my savior. The stone which the builders builders rejected has become the cornerstone by the Lord has this been done it is wonderful in our eyes the stone rejected by the builders has been Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. I will give thanks to you for you have answered me and have been my Savior. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. For his
his kindness endures forever. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon, everybody. This week, if you denied your identity as a Christian, how different would your life be? If for one week you denied that you were a Christian, how much would change about how you were going to live your life anyway this week? This past Sunday afternoon, Scotty Scheffler won the Masters for the second time in five years. And in an interview after winning the championship down there in Augusta, Georgia, uh, he said something quite interesting. He, he was telling the reporters how earlier that morning before he had teed off, he was sitting around with some of his buddies, and he was sharing with them about how he didn't like how badly he wanted to win the Masters. He, he, he was sharing, I wish I didn't want to win as badly as I did. 
And so he's telling the reporters, listen, I love winning. I hate losing. I wanted to win more than anything, and I didn't like it. I wish I didn't want to win as badly as I did. Some of his friends that morning turned to him and said something very profound. His friend said, Scotty, your victory is secure on the cross. And so Scotty, to the reporters, continued to, to explain what that means. He, he said, it felt so good, and it's a special feeling to know that your identity, that my identity is secure. That it's not dependent on how up and down my life is going. That there's a meaning, there's a purpose to your life, to my life that I've received. And so then he concluded in the interview saying, whether I won this tournament or I lost this tournament, one thing was for sure, my identity was secure. And what's that identity? What's he talking about? I think it's the identity that St. John in our second reading this afternoon reminds us of. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us that we might be called the children of God. That we might be called the children of God. If you peel back all the many layers of all the many ways in which you could answer this simple question, who are you? You would hopefully get to that place where you recognize yourself as being nothing more than the child of God. And those words, child of God, I am a child of God, they, they're kind of cliche. They, they're trite. We've heard them a million times. What do they even mean? What does it mean to be a child of God? And to have child of God as your most fundamental core identity. It means that you aren't fully responsible for yourself. It, it means that God claims responsibility for you. It means you can't actually fully know who you are except by knowing God. It means that the most fundamental thing about you is that you have been created and thought into being by God. Think of it this way. Uh, try, and, try and imagine having to tell your life story without any reference to your parents. And, and that life story might be more or less perfect because our parents are more or less perfect. But try and imagine explaining yourself without any reference to your parents. It would make no sense. Uh, you would have no explanation for the source of who you are. Now apply that to God. How can we understand ourselves? How can we think about ourselves? How can we identify ourselves without any reference to God? We can't. We, we, we make no sense if we try to do that. So our most fundamental identity is that of being children of God. And so on God's end, that means that he's taking responsibility for you. On God's end, it means that he cares for you. On God's end, it means that he's given you purpose and meaning. And on our end, it means that we'll accept that. And it's a heck of an offer. But God's not the Godfather he doesn't make us an offer that we can't refuse. He's God the Father. He makes us an offer that we can refuse. And we often do. We often do. Uh, in our modern world, but this is a thing as, as ancient as time, we seek to live our lives on our own. Uh, to make of our lives what we desire and what we desire alone. To, to be self-made people. Uh, this is what we see. 
in the Garden of Eden. This is what we see in Jesus' parable of the prodigal son. I will live my life according to my own rules. I will make of myself what I want to make of myself. And I don't need your help, God. Thank you very much. Uh, and so we, we, we start to build up for ourselves new identities. Uh, we start to, to think of ourselves and identify with whatever our job title is or uh, how much is in our bank account. Uh, we identify ourselves with desires or feelings that we have. Or we identify ourselves by, by our failings and our weaknesses, and, and those become those places in which we build our identity, our sense of self, and our self-meaning and purpose on that. Uh, it, it, to quote another movie, and I actually I don't have it memorized, but it's the most famous song of I don't know how many years. The line goes like this, It's time to see what I can do to test the limits and break through. No right, no wrong, no rules for me, I'm free. Let it go, let it go. That's Elsa from Frozen, and some of you, that might have went right over your head, but it's the most famous movie of like the last, I don't even know how many years. And it's the most famous song. And this might be the most controversial thing I've ever said in a homily, uh, but Elsa's wrong. She's expressing a, a completely modern idea of identity that I just create myself, that I wasn't created, I just gotta make something of myself. And don't we all do that from time to time? See our lives as our own little projects, rather than something we've received from a heavenly Father. If you denied your identity as a Christian this week, how different would your life St. Peter could probably tell us a story or three about what that's like to deny an identity in Christ. St. Peter was someone who very literally received an identity from Christ. He was given a new name by Christ and given a new mission, a new purpose, a new meaning by Christ. And then when Jesus stands on trial, what does he do? St. Luke says, in the second of his denial, someone comes up and says, you're a friend of him, aren't you? You're a friend of Christ, aren't you? And Peter says, no, sir, I am not. What's he done? It's become much more convenient for him to not identify himself as a follower of Christ, to, to seek another identity that might be more convenient, might be safer for him in the moment. And what would that have been like? But then what happens? If you reread your first reading, our first reading tonight, it's St. Peter speaking after Pentecost. And, and just to imagine the boldness by which he is speaking. He's become fully alive. He's become fully himself. And how come? Well, we hear Peter filled with the Holy Spirit. He's become his truest self. He, he's grown in to, to not deny his identity in Christ, but to fully accept it. And what happens when he does? He becomes most fully the man he's been created to be. He's becoming most fully the man Jesus called him to be. And what about you? When you come out of hiding of all of the many other ways in which you can seek to build a life for yourself and identify for yourself, and you allow Christ to take hold of who you are, for Christ to be the one who tells you who you are, do you trust that that's the path to coming to life and life to the full? Uh, that Jesus is like salt. He doesn't take away any of the flavor of your personality or your uniqueness. He, he brings it to the fore. He gives you the fullest flavor, that we become most fully ourselves when we find ourselves in Christ. When we find ourselves in Christ. Uh, for us modern people, the most important thing to us is how we think of ourselves. 
or at different times in our life, the most important thing is what other people think about us. But that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is, of, is what God thinks of us. And what God thinks of us, what God thinks of us is that we are his children. That he cares for us, that he takes responsibility for us. And so the question for us is how do we respond to that? Because the great call of each one of our lives is not to become certain kinds of people that also happen to become, that, that happen to be Christian. It's to be Christians, followers of Christ, who are certain kinds of people. So if you're a teacher, uh, you don't happen to be a teacher. You're not a teacher who happens to also be a Christian. You're called to be a Christian teacher. If, if you're a dad, you're not called to become a dad who, who's also a Christian. You're called to be a Christian dad. That our identity as Christian takes hold of our entire lives. I was talking to a dad this morning. And the topic of, uh, this is how our identity in Christ plays out in our modern lives. Uh, the, idea, the, 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 the issue of uh, youth sports came in the conversation. And all, this, all, all I'll say about youth sports is that it's an increasingly high level of commitment that's being asked of families and, and kids to be on traveling teams. That's all I'll say about that. But if that's you... <laughs> Uh, on the weekends, when you're traveling for, for baseball, uh, do you find yourself as a, a, a family that's, that's wrapped up in a youth baseball team that also happens to be a Christian? Or are you a Christian family that happens to find yourself with kids on a youth baseball team? And there's a profound difference in how you answer those questions. And how you answer that question will, 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 will determine how you act. And this is all kinds of uh, application to our lives. The way in which identity uh, is how we paint so much of our lives these days. And if you're a Christian first and then something second, then you will approach how you live your lives in a completely different sort of way. I guess what I'm trying to say is if you know God, then you will know yourself if there's no God in your life, you will not know your truest self. And this is a struggle for us. To know the great call of our life, but to know where we find ourselves so often. And so with that in mind, let us remind ourselves that this weekend is called Good Shepherd Sunday. Because we have a shepherd who seeks us out wherever we are. Jesus says he's the shepherd who knows us. And calls us by name. That each one of us is fully known by him. No matter where we find ourselves. And that's where he goes to try and bring us back. And that he gives us a name. We don't have to give ourselves a name for him. It's given. Our identity as his children. Is something freely given to each one of us. Let us not be sheep. Who, who, who continue to hide ourselves, who, who don't allow ourselves to be found by the Good Shepherd, who hide be behind this and that identity, this and that thing. Let us allow ourselves to be found by Him so as to find ourselves. If this week you more fully accepted your identity as a child of God, how much would change about your life? Friends, let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ.
Trusting in our Heavenly Father's love for us, let us entrust our needs to him this day. For church leaders, may the Lord grant them wisdom and humility in shepherding his flock on the path of holiness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the salvation of all people, may the Holy Spirit lead all hearts to repentance for sin and trust in God's mercy and forgiveness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are ill, may Christ heal them in body and spirit and comfort them with his presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of our faith community, may the Good Shepherd help us to love one another as he loves us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Michael Hayes, for all the faithful departed, all the intentions listed in our book of prayers, and for all of our own intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And on this World Day of Prayer for Vocations, we pray for an increase in vocation to the priesthood, religious life, and holy marriages, especially from our parish and in our diocese. We pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, in your great love and mercy, hear and answer all of our prayers that we bring to you in the holy and powerful name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite up any children to participate with us in our children's offertory. Our offertory hymn is Shepherd Me, O God, number 480. Shepherd Me, O God, 480. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times, to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the founts of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number 344, Gift of Finest We, 344.
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Just a couple of announcements tonight. Victory vouchers are in sale in the gathering space after Mass. Uh, the, we are basically right on our annual diocesan appeal uh, goal, just uh, still short of about uh, just under $1,000. So if you have not uh, turned in your envelope for that yet, please do so. But thank you so much uh, for your generosity. We're knocking on the door for that goal. Uh, the app, um, and then please join us for the last Ignite Sunday, uh, which is tomorrow night. Uh, and we will be learning more about the Shroud of Turin. More details are found in the bulletin. Hope you all have a great and a safe week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is 692. I know that my Redeemer lives. 692.